Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in C++, and boy, it's been a while, um, but school's finally out, it's summer starting, even though I'll be starting summer school this next week, but oh well. And But now I can finally focus on tutorials, so I'm really excited about that. So, uh, But in this tutorial, we're going to be learning about dynamic memory allocation. So we touched on uh, a bit on pointers before, and I told you how, and I think I did, I actually can't quite remember, uh, that we could actually dynamically create variables not in regular computer memory but inside the heap instead and that will allow us to have more control upon the lifespan of the variable so first of all we're going to learn how we can actually dynamically create a variable so in order to do that uh, in order to create a pointer as we normally did we would type out the data type followed by an asterisk that preceded the the identifier or in other words the name of the variable so this pointer, we'll just call P1, because that's what most textbooks use, so I'll just call it P1. Um, so that's great and all, but um, before, I think what we did before, is I would have created like just a regular integer, set it equal to something, and now it set this pointer equal to that variable or something. But when we do it just like this, there's no value that, that, that this pointer is pointing to. It's not pointing to anything at all, actually. It's not even pointing... It's, it's just not pointing anywhere. There's nothing here. So how can we make it point to a value, in this case an integer? Well, what you would do is type out the identifier, which is the name of the pointer, just P1 without the asterisk, and uh, set it equal to, then use the new keyword, new, followed by a data type, so integer. And what this will do is point to an unknown integer it's going to be somewhere it can return anything god knows what it will return, re return. It, it really could return to any, anything so it's going to be a funky number it could be a it's most likely going to be some massive number it might resemble an address but who knows so if you wanted to actually set it equal to something well what do you do well when you set it equal just like we did in the last video using the asterisk itself the dereference operator set it equal to a number and now it's actually pointing specifically to a number but it's still the same address this this will make it point to some address in memory but the number that it will return is we don't know but now we do know the number at that address so we're now specifying the number that's at that address so if we went C out and typed out like let's say pointer 1 colon using the dereference operator uh, there we go and then if we clicked control F5 it should give us 45. Pointer 1, 45. That's exactly what we wanted. So there we go. We just dynamically created a variable on, on our own without having to set it equal to a variable that already exists in the regular computer memory. So now all this information is in the heap. Now you might be thinking, well, how much memory can we hold on our heap? Well, that really depends on your computer. But if you're using any computer like mine, mine was made in 2010, and it's a beast. I mean, this is 2012, but... This is May 2012, but or June 2012, but even though this desktop is a little more than two years old, it's still a beast today. Uh, any any computer that you have, it, it's most likely you won't have a problem. I mean, unless you're making a million, billion dynamic, uh, dynamically created variables, you should be fine. I mean, I don't see how you could take up all your space, but but there you go. So now we're creating variables specifically in the heap rather than in regular memory. And uh, that's really about it. I mean, how to manipulate pointers, I've already showed you in the last video, so there really isn't much more for me to show you. Let me actually show you how to use pointers inside functions. How about that? So let's say you want to pass pointers as parameters. So in order to do that, uh, let's just create a void function, actually, and let's just call it print. Whoops, want to spell it correctly. And inside there, normally we would just type out int if we were going to pass a regular integer as a parameter. Well, in order to make it a, in order to make it a pointer, just add the dereference operator right afterwards. That's it. So here we can add, you know, prints, prints the value a pointer is pointing to. I don't know. I'm kind of making this up. Int with the dereference operator, pointer that is pointing to a number or an integer. I don't know. It makes sense though, right? So then we'll go down here and actually write out the definition of this prototype. 
So void prints. So ints. And this time I'll type out the whole thing as pointer. So as you can see, I'm giving it a different name, I'm not just calling it p1. And let's actually cut this. And let's just throw the print out in here. And see, p1 does not exist in this scope. p1 only exists as a local scope in the main. So we're going to have to call it pointer. I'm, I'm actually kind of reteaching myself since it's been a while since I've done any tutorials. And uh, that's it. So as you can see, you still use the dereference operator in the, as the parameters. And in order to call the function, let's just type out print. Now, do we type out just p1 like this? Or excuse me. Do we use the dereference, moder um, dereference operator? Uh, no. As you might remember, any time you pass something in as a parameter uh, when you're calling a function like this, you never use any of those special characters. You never use the ampersand or the dereference operator or any of those other things or cons or any of that kind of stuff. You just type out the name of the pointer or the function or whatever it is. Uh, so you just type out the name, nothing special, no special characters. Unless it's a function, then you would actually type in like parentheses or something, but it's not. So just P1, that's it. And now this pointer will be now equal to whatever this value is pointing to. So if we use the this uh, dereference operator for this pointer, it should still be pointing to 45. So let's click save, and let's run this and see if it works. And it does, as you can see, so it still works. And I'm not going to actually return anything. I'm not going to do anything more. I'm just going to quickly show you what you would do if you want to return a pointer. If you want to return a pointer, instead of it being void, you just type out int with uh, the dereference operator right afterwards. And then here, you would do the very same. So int with an ampersand, not an ampersand, an asterisk. Then you would return, and again, would you use the dereference operator? No, you will not. You'll get an error. You just use the name of the pointer itself, which is just pointer. So, and that's it for uh, dynamically uh, allocated variables. Now we're going to actually learn how to actually delete these manually from memory. We don't have to worry about that with regular pointers, pointing to regular integers and whatnot, but when it comes to deleting them manually, which is the, really the point of all of this, you only have to worry about with dynamic arrays. So we're going to be learning about the difference between static and dynamic arrays in the next tutorial. And uh, yeah, so I'll see you then. So we'll learn how to uh, create dynamic arrays and get rid of them. So I'll see you next time.